Hello everyone and welcome to another deck deep dive for Warno. And this time we are going into the East German. The f and we are going into the deck that I currently play the most, 7th Panzer. Which also, on the current patch, is quite the potent one. Not quite on the same level as 5th Plain Day, or maybe 3rd US, but it is for sure up there in the top 5 divisions at the moment. And it has quite some cool stuff. So let's jump in here. And let's start in the logistics tab. Where we got one CV and a lot of supply. Uh, supply in the stack is quite important. The T813 and the MTLB also go well together. The uh, T813 is a bit quicker, gets more supply. You can keep them behind the line and then you have the MTLB that can take a bit of damage. And also then can be used for resupplying your frontline units. Go back to the T813, get resupplied and get back out there. So, yeah. One CV, as we will have more CVs here in the infantry tab and the tank tab. So we are coming up to a nice number of six anyways. And that way we don't need one here. The SPW is nice and fast, li lightly armored, so it doesn't instantly explode when it gets hit by artilleries. And it doesn't get shot to pieces by 50 cults. So that's why we use this here. Nice, fast, cheap. It's quite a nice thing to have. Artillery? You have some decently powerful tools. Uh, the mortars here, cheap and affordable. They are here especially for smoke laying, as you will need a lot of smoke uh, against heavier tank divisions. As your T-72s need to get a bit closer to really start dealing damage. When they get a bit closer, they deal fantastic damage for their price. But against something like an M1A1 HA, you want to be able to smoke them off. Same goes for enemy ATGMs, potentially smoking them off. And that's what these guys are for as they do it for a pretty cheap price. Akatsias are there for dealing with ATGM positions and units and buildings. And then I found out that the, uh, the MFRV is pretty solid at suppressing positions by now and forcing the enemy to move bigger plops out of positions. And they're actually relatively cheap. They have a pretty good reload time. Um, yeah, their fire speed on the, on the salvo still could be a bit quicker. I'm not 100% satisfied with the... MLRS systems yet, especially the ones with the smaller rockets, but it does decent enough damage that I would say these guys here are worth it, as they're also not that expensive. So, yeah, resupply is also decent-ish, as this is for the whole 80 rockets, which are for salvos here. Not fantastic, but it is acceptable. So, yeah, next one, the tank tap. And the tank tap is fantastic, especially when it comes down to... The T-72s, as these are just insane powerhouses when it comes to their penetration on the gun. Um, and the armor is still decent enough that all the smaller tanks you don't really worry about. And the big tanks will struggle to one-shot you, and that is the important factor there, as you have some time to react. Uh, and so, whilst you can get out, out in, enough of these that you can like shoot at the enemy, start to deal damage, the ones that they hit you smoke off, retreat and keep on firing with the rest so you can really create really strong formations of three four five of these and bring the pain to the enemy to 55s super cheap the flamethrower pretty help can be pretty helpful as well so that is quite nice as yeah the tank tab here really is the strength we jumped over the infantry tab which is pretty standard we have modschützen in bmp ones um i take them without the ATGM, as I just want to have these as cheap infantry and the BMP-1 as something that can deal with some APCs. Uh, the flamethrower coming in quickly with the SPW-70. Um, the SPW-70 decent fire support with its gun. Flamethrower is fantastic against infantry at the moment. Uh, much it's in BTR coming in in the SPW-70 as well, as all APCs at the moment can be quite nice. Um, to pin down enemy infantry. This RPG-7VL is a pretty decent rocket launcher, so these Modschützen's coming in fast, helping out where they are needed. Quite lovely as well. Um, Pioneers are your cheap infantry that can help out with dealing with other infantry to all the position. The Conquerors is the best ATGM you can get and gives you something with a bit more penetration than even the T-72s on the long range, so it's quite nice to have to deal some damage to especially the mid-range tanks. Or, or, or like the slightly higher range, like an M1A1 or an M1. Oh, these can be quite nice there. So having some ATGMs here is nice. You get them in good enough quantity as well. And I take them with a BMP that also has an ATGM, so that I can like fire two ATGMs at the enemy at the same time. 
maybe bait out uh, some tanks to shoot at the BMP so that the conquerors can connect and stuff like that. As the HGM on the uh, on the uh, BMP one is only a, a weak one, only having 16 penetrations here. The leader is a nice one as well, as it has an RPG. It comes in, in an SBW for me as well, as I really like these. Um, 25 points, not that expensive, and they come with two MGs. They have two frontal armor, so they don't get immediately screwed up. So, yeah, infantry tap here. Not that numerous, but you have enough numbers to support your tanks. And you just get solid infantry in your recon tap as well. Spezial of Clever here. Super fantastic infantry. It's the trade monster. It has an RPG 18, which is decentish enough to uh, deal with transports. Nothing more. But if you get these guys into a position where they can shoot a couple, a couple of transports, they can be nice there. Not really what you want to use them for, though. As you want to use them for their GSR, and you want to use them for their Dragunov. As these guys can deal good damage against infantry out of hidden positions, and they especially can see a lot of stuff. Most of the time, you will keep them around with um, return fire mode on, just so that they spot for your T-72s. And they are fantastic with it, giving you the forward deployment as well, so they can help out cutting you, carving you out a bit of space on the map in the early game. Availability with six is also pretty fine, so they are quite nice. Aufklevers, um, yeah, these are your cheap in off uh, recon that you can move around a bit free more freely as they are quite affordable. And the UATS is another extra thing that has solid eyes for you. BRM1 is what I usually use to accompany my tanks as it has exceptional optics, keeping it slightly behind, or like, like really just slightly behind my T-72s, just so that I have something with exceptional optics moving with my tanks, really allowing me to spot ambushes a bit earlier than you usually would. It's firepower, not that massive. It's three frontal armor though, can save it from a bit of punishment, and that is quite nice, but really the exceptional optics is what you get this thing for. And then in the AA tab, you have a solid amount of choice as well, the options here are decent, not great, but the coupe gives you the amazing long range that you currently need uh, to really keep the airplanes out there. Like, if you have four of them on the battlefield, enemy airplay is heavily reduced, and overwhelming them will be nearly a thing of impossibility at the moment, so they are quite nice, and they're not that expensive. Stradla 10M is my thing against a bigger number of helicopters, as they have a decent anti-helicopter range, and they can keep up with even the best ATGMs on helicopters range-wise, so that is nice. Accuracy is the big issue though, so you usually want to have them somewhat around in pairs. And then the Eagle is what you have around in all the spots where you have a good building spot or so, where you can shoot out maybe onto an enemy um, helicopter out of hiding, and just uh, snipe down enemy recon helicopters and so on. The Eagle is quite nice for that, especially once the what's is sold, it's only 35 points. And the Eagle stats quite nice, um, especially against such recon helicopters, and it can be helpful to finish off an enemy plane that flies over it after it got hit by a coop, so that connection goes quite well. I felt the Strellers are a bit too unreliable, the range also a bit too f low for my liking, so I'd rather go with the Eagle. Treller really 40 accuracy is a bit too low. The the Eagle for sure does it a good bit better, and chill gas I also feel like lacking a bit of killing power at the moment. You can, if you get a fourth slot in, then I would say a, Strela, a Shilka is the way to go. As then you, they stun lock helicopters 100%, so that is the nice thing about them. And they have a decentish range there as well. But it's not as good as I would like. Like, I would like them to have 2600 meter range against helicopters, then they would be fantastic. This way around, they actually sometimes just get sniped by enemy HGM helicopters, and that feels really, really bad. So that's why I don't use the Shelka, I use the Strela instead. Even though the Strela is a bit RNG based at the moment, I hope we soon get some stress on missile misses against helicopters and aircraft as well to have a bit more reliability in the whole AA versus air shenanigans. But until then, Strela, you have to be careful, but they can be really good. And then. Helicopter tap, quite solid beasts as well. The Mi-24Ps are fantastic helicopters, great ATGM, um, great gun, great rockets, good armor, 10 ACM. Like, they, for 170 point, for sure, bring a good, uh, around a good package. And then the Mi-24D, uh, even though it says AT, that's usually not what you use it for. It's more like a cheap rally, uh, rec uh, rocket helicopter. Its gun, sadly, also not that amazing, but its rockets are quite helpful. 
it is still armored, so it can still annoy the enemy. Uh, most airplanes can't shoot it down with a single gun run, and all of that is quite nice. Uh, but the ATGM is really lackluster. It's only it's really seldom that the Falanga P does connect with something, as it has the lowest range of any hel uh, helicopter born ATGMs, it has the lowest accuracy. And it has one of the lowest penetrations there as well, so it's really a bit lackluster in general. But if necessary, you can use it to kill off maybe an I uh, CV if you can find it or so no, behind enemy lines. If you can get these behind enemy lines, you still can potentially ambush artillery or so. So for 120 points, they are a strong package, but the real damage dealer is against lighter targets with the rockets on 2100 meters. That is. Dealing a decent amount of damage, and you get two per cards, which is really the deal that you want to go for here. The, the card efficiency is nice, as you get two armored helicopters that are hard to kill and can be annoying. And uh, as I said, killing power really, really a lot lower than, for example, an Apache or any higher level Mi-24. But it's for sure a decent enough package to get into one card. And then air tap, you want to have a fighter. The fi uh, fighter I go for is the MiG-23. As I'm not a big fan of the MiG 21s, as if you have two cards, the MiG 21s are nice accompanying it. But if you only get them with one card, and I feel like you want to have some strike packages as well, um, the MiG 23 is just the better all round package. The R 27R is a quite good missile. Um, the R 60M is decent ish accompanying it. And it is a good all round fighter, can be um, zoning out something like a enemy. Like, all the enemy small, slow planes in A-10 or so, quite nicely. Uh, Alpha Jet, without having to worry too, too much. It's still a bit more maneuverable than the MiG-21, uh, and it's, it's the same speed. ECM, sadly, also only 10%, though. That is a big of a problem. And, yeah, not having... But having long-range missiles is the deal that I really like here. That you can outrange Harriers, outrange all the bad low-level NATO and pack planes with this to a solid degree. So Micron D is quite important as they get outclassed by the higher level planes as well by a good bit, but you can potentially shoot them down like an F-15, uh, F-16 even, and for uh, SU-27s and so on. Like they outclass the MiG-23 ML by a good bit, but you can potentially shoot them down whilst the Harrier usually doesn't stand a chance there. MiG-21 BIS, still a decent bomber. It doesn't one-shot uh, tanks anymore, which is a good thing as it is still a really cheap plane. It comes in quickly though and it can destroy, for example, an ATGM really reliably. It can kill off IFVs. So if you are in need of a strike package quickly uh, on the point, these are still your go-to bombing planes in my eyes. Uh, you just have to be careful that you for sure don't have too much AA around as they are super flimsy. And as I said, you don't want to use them against full hit point tanks anymore. Against damaged tanks or against tanks that you're just about to engage, they can still be helpful to tilt it into your favor. They still do some damage there, but they don't outright nuke M1A1 HAs anymore, which is a good thing though. And for that, you m more likely have this SU-22M. SU-22s still amazing because of the ECM. Speed is decent as well. The ATGM here dealing good damage. And if you get one of them on target, you basically always get close to killing the enemy off. The 30mm gun also can kill off helicopters really fantastically, the double 30mm. So these are still decent hel helicopter killers together with the R60Ms. And yeah, the ATGM here is there to kill, to help you out killing off some big tanks. Like if you're up against the 30S, if you're up against 5th Panzer, you sometimes will struggle against strong Leos, strong A Abrams, strong T80s in positions where you can't quite get there easily with T-72s and that's where the SU-22 comes in to really fulfill the package as your T-72 strikes perfectly up low. It strikes really great against something like an M1A1 uh, or T-80B or BV, but against the T-80Us, against the M1A1HAs, against the Leo 2A4s and 2A3s, you sometimes can get into a bit of a dicey situation, and that's where that plane really can help out re bringing numbers back into our favor, especially as it also trades really cost efficiently, even if you lose it against those kind of things. So this is the deck. It is all about cost efficiency and getting this ball somewhat rolling. 
Uh, it has decent enough artillery to support. It has decent enough infantry to support everything. Flamethrower is still at the moment the best stick you see, so that is quite helpful in winning town fights to some degree. And what it misses would be a better um, IFB and maybe a bit more reliable AA. That those are the two things I would say would make this deck perfect. But obviously that's not quite the goal of these decks. If they all would be perfect, the game would be boring. But T72 is a fantastic tank, and this is a fantastic division. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, consider leaving a like. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye, and have a great day.